All right, we'll go ahead and start this clip again. Hope you're enjoying it. Little bit by a little bit. You have to change it by, so to speak, a lot. Bohr's idea that electrons can only have fixed orbits drew inspiration from other new theory. Light and energy are waves made up of discrete energy packets, the quanta, now called protons. But most physicists disapproved of Bohr's theory that would apply this quantum idea to matter. In 1926, a 25-year-old German physicist named Werner Heisenberg came up with a matrix-based mathematical description of atoms that supported Bohr's view. A classical physicist remained unconvinced. The math was unfamiliar. The ideas too abstract. In May of 1926, an Austrian physicist named Erwin Schrödinger published his theory on wave mechanics, which offered an alternative to Bohr's particle theory. The essence of the debate was, was the electron a particle or was the electron a wave? The Schrodinger school believed that the electron was a smeared out wave. It didn't exist at one point in space or time at all. The electron was a wave that permeated all space and time. Physicists loved this idea. We had a physical picture. We could look inside the atom. Physicists knew how to calculate with waves. They calculated waves as an undergraduate in college. They knew how waves went around uh, in, and formed orbits. So the appeal of the Schrodinger picture was that it was pictorial. It was almost Newtonian. It was continuous. None of this quantum business. And you could calculate with it. So who had it right? Was matter made up of waves? like in the Schrodinger model? Or was the Bohr-Heisenberg model right, and matter was made up of particles? The competition to find the answer was fierce. The essence of the Bohr-Heisenberg picture was that the electron was a particle. However, there was a, a certain amount of uncertainty with regards to where the particle was. Now, one day, Heisenberg was so paralyzed, worrying about all these problems, that he took a walk in the park. Outside his institute, there's a famous park, and late at night, he walked through the park wondering, how can it be? How can it be that you don't quite know where the electron is? And then in a flash, he understood. Because to understand where an electron is, you have to look at it. To look at it, you have to shine a light on it. But when you shine a light on it, that disturbs where the electron is. So the very fact of observing an object changes its location. Therefore, he realized that uncertainty is an essential part of his picture. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle showed that it is fundamentally impossible to measure the position and the momentum of a particle at the same time with accuracy. The more you know about a particle's position, the less you can know about its momentum. And the reverse is also true. The more you know about the momentum of a particle, the less you can know about its position. And when he finally had that idea, he realized that he could merge the Schrodinger picture with the Bohr-Heisenberg picture to give us the modern-day theory of the quantum principle. In other words, the electron is a point particle, but you don't know quite where it is. And the probability of finding it at any given point is given by a wave, the Schrodinger wave. So we now have this beautiful synthesis of waves and particles. All right. Um, I hope that that video helped for some of you. I'm aware that it was low quality. The audio was probably a disaster. I hope it wasn't too loud. Um, but it's really good at explaining this concept. Now, it is a very confusing concept, so don't stress. And you don't have to understand the fundamental concepts of the wave mechanical model. But the whole point of it is on that crux that he said at the end. That the electron has kind of characteristics of a particle and a wave. And we're going to explain that as we continue on through this.